Hello, what's up YouTube? Ronnie Sweet and sure and in this tutorial I want to show you how you can edit male portraits in Photoshop. So I have so many shows and they are more of retouching female models or females and this is gonna be focusing more on my male self and yeah of course I'm a man and I want to show you how you can edit your male photos in Photoshop or portraits for men in Photoshop. So as you can see this is the after that is we are going to be aiming for this kind of look so I'm just going to come right here and I'm going to delete this so that you can learn everything so what I'm going to do I'm going to be using my actions because I have so many beginner friendly tutorials and they really take a long time to create but if I told you want this to be a beginner tutorial I could as well do that for you and I want to show you everything in this so let me not use actions let me just go in for a more beginner friendly tutorial and explain everything in the shortest time possible and this is going to be my photo right here so what I'm going to do I'm just going to come to the background and create two copies and I'm going to be using frequency separation both using a mixer brush tool and using the lasso tool so I'm just going to come to the background layer and create two copies out of the background layer so by hitting ctrl command j twice and I'm going to name this low frequency and I'm going to name this high frequency just like that. So what I'm basically going to do, I'm going to come to the high frequency layer and deactivate it or hide it and come to the low frequency layer and I want to get the details or to blur out the details from this photo. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to filter, blur and come to Gaussian blur. So at this point I have to move the radius up to a point when the most prominent textures are just starting to get lost out of the image so you can see you have to look for that point so this is going to be like a refresh point in which when we are when we start losing out on these details it means that the rest of the details in the photo are going to be lost out so you have to look for that reference point or the area that has more prominent details in the image so i'm just going to come to the radius and i'm going to start moving the radius up and for Male photos, just make sure to move the radius slightly high because you want to remain more with the details at the end of the retouching. Don't use a very low radius. So this looks good and I'm going to hit OK. So right now, we have been able to eliminate the textures from the low frequency layer but we have hidden them somewhere in the low frequency layer. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to the high frequency layer and simply turn it on. So in this layer, we only want to remain with the textures or the details. So I'm just going to come right here to image and come down to apply image. So this is where we have to remain or extract the details that we are able to eliminate from the low frequency. Layer. They are still somewhere around this layer. So just come to this option and just select that layer because we just want to get them from where this layer stored them. And after doing that, just come to the blending mode. And since this is a 16-bit image the blend mode has to be add and make sure pass at 100 scale is to offset 0 preserve transparency and mask cannot check and make sure the preview is on and what we have to do we invert this and you can see that we have the details or the outlines of a photo and if at all you have an 8-bit image if at all you have 8 right here use the blend mode of subtract and make sure invert is not checked on or pass at 100 Scale is to offset 128 and make sure the invert option is not turned on and opacity at 100. Make sure the channel is RGB. So that is what you do for an 8 bit image. But this, this is a 16 bit image. Just going to use add, turn on the invert, blend mode is add, opacity at 100. The scale is to offset 0. My previous on and I'm just going to hit OK. So just want to review back the details or the whole image. So just come to the blend mode and change it from normal and look for linear light just right there. So I'm going to put these two in a group by hitting Ctrl and selecting both, left clicking on both and hit Ctrl Command G on the keyboard to group them and I'm going to name my group to Frequency Separation. So I'm done separating the frequencies of the image. So next thing is going to be retouching the photo. So I'm just going to come to this and open up by clicking the drop down icon and select the low frequency layer. Remember, when you're doing skin retouching, we are often times working 
on the low frequency labic, meaning we just want to blend the transitions within the skin tones. And when we have those even skin tone transitions, it means that the image is going to be really flawless. And with those even transitions within the skin colors or skin tones and the blemish removal, it means that the image is going to be retouched at the end of the tutorial. So just come to the low frequency layer and select it. So first we are going to be using the Mr. Bash tool. And if at all your icon is this cross-like icon, I hope you can see this. Make sure you turn off the caps lock key. So we come to the brushes and simply right click and get our mixer brush tool. And now we just want to set up the mixer brush tool to blend the skin really nice and well. So make sure you set it as a clean brush. And we have two options right here. We have load the brush after each and every stroke and clean the brush after each and every stroke. And since we are dealing with skin tone or skin color, there are different skin tone variations in the photo. So just, we just don't want to carry color from one area to another. So make sure the weight is 9%. The load is 75, mix at 90, and the flow at 100%. Make sure sample areas is not checked because we only want to work with the low frequency layer. And right now we want to just come and blend or even out the skin tone transitions. So you're basically going to slightly zoom in. And how you can notice or see these uneven transitions within the skin tone, you can either use the method of turning off the textures, and in this case you're going to be looking at the colors only, and you can as well come and leave the textures turned on and you come and create a black and white layer on top of the high frequency layer and just darken, up, darken down or darken the reds. And in that case, you are going to see the uneven skin tone transitions. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the first technique that is turning off the textures or the high frequency layer. And using my brush tool, select the low frequency layer and make sure sample areas is not checked and start blending the colors that look alike. So I'm just going to left click and usually my setting or the setting of my mixer brush, the hardness is at zero, meaning it is a soft mixer brush. So I'm just going to come and paint. And for male portraits, you don't have to do so much because we just want to, re to remain with other structures or facial structures. And we don't want it to be really a smooth photo at the end of it all. But mine is looking a little bit smooth because I have turned off the textures or the high frequency layer. So I'm just going to come and blend these areas just like that so like i said you don't have so much to do when it comes to retouching male portraits so just come and do that and as you can see i'm just trying to keep it or keep the retouching as minimal as possible so make sure you don't remove all the details just blend on what you feel should be worked on so just increase on the size of the brush by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard and you are going to be good to go. And as you can see, we have really done a pretty decent job. So when you turn on the textures and we see the before and after, it is really nice and we have the original skin details in the photo. So I'm just going to come and I work on the rest of the areas just like that. Like I said, you don't have so much to do when it comes to retouching male portraits. I'm just going to zoom out and look at the photo. And you can as well blend these other areas just like that. So you're just going to do also the color grading on this image later on because most of you were interested in how I did the color grading for my own image. So stick around and we're just going to be doing that in a bit after the retouching process. So you're done evening out the transitions within the skin tone. And let's see the before and after. That's the before, after, before, after. So you can as well reduce on the size and work on the areas you feel like you haven't worked on yet. So I'm just going to delete the black and white layer and come and get my lasso tool right here. Zoom in and now just come and fine tune the image even more just like that. Make selections. So I'm using a feather of 22 pixels because I don't want this to be a rough selection on the edges. That's why the feather is slightly to 22 pixels. 
So just come back to your tab blur and come down to Gaussian blur. I'm just going to with now you can see that this is making it look plastic because we have not selected the layer that is containing the colors in the photo. So I'm just going to cancel that and undo that by hitting Ctrl Command Z Z and come and select the low frequency layer. Every single time you're doing skin retouching and it is referring to colors or skin tones, make sure that you select the low frequency layer. So with the clone stamp tool selected, the feathering at 22 pixels, just come and select on the skin area. So you're now doing a transition or evening out the transitions within the skin tone. So come to filter blind, come to Gaussian blur. So usually I multiply this radius by three. So the area so that I used when I was trying to separate the frequencies of the image, I just multiply that by three and simply type in that value. So 8 by 3 is 24. I'm just going to type in 24 and hit OK. And apply it onto the overall image just like that. Right click and come to Gaussian Blur. And like I said, for male photos, you have less work to do. And you can see we are doing less trying to do the retouching in this case. So I'm just going to come and also apply that. And we are good to go. And the next thing you can come and clean up or remove the blemishes by selecting the high frequency I remember this slide is the one containing the textures so just come and select the clone stamp tool or percent the flat 100 percent current layer selected because we only want to work on this current layer that contains the details zoom in command plus and now come and sample so alternate left click to sample or copy and stamp over the blemish so you're copying and pasting skin that is close or near the blemish. So just do that. And like I've said, for male photos, do less of uh, the retouching. That's why I'm just going to leave other small insignificant blemishes. And for beauty portraits, for, for example, for females, make sure that you do everything and eliminate every single blemish because... They may be uneasy or uncomfortable with those blemishes. So for males, they don't mind much. So I'm just going to, and just like that, we are done removing the blemishes. So what I'm going to do basically, I'm just going to come to this photo. And I just want to do a little bit of dodging and burning. And I just want to work more on the highlights of the image. So I'm just going to come and create a curves adjustment layer. And after creating this curves adjustment, I'm just going to come to select and come down to color range and simply come and measure sampled colors is selected and selection mode is active and quick mask is also active. So with this eyedropper tool, I'm just going to click on the highlight of the image just like that. And you can see the selected area is going to appear all look white in this case. And you can as well change the fuzziness depending on the area that you want to target and simply hit OK. And after doing that, I'm just going to come to my curves and make a midpoint and just slightly brighten up the highlights. So this is going to be subtle. That's the before and after. And after that, I'm just going to create a stamp visible layer by hitting Shift Alternate Command E on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer. And I'm going to go to Filter, Camera Row Filter, and just work on the eye and teeth threatening and the final color grading for this very image. So what I'm going to do, I'm first of all going to come to the HSL panel or the color mixer tool in the camera row filter and come first of all to the luminance of my oranges. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn the luminosity of the oranges slightly to around 7. So luminance is more of the lightness or darkness of given color. So I'm just going to come to the saturation and slightly turn down the saturation of my oranges and come to the hues and take the hue of the oranges slightly up to around 7 and also take the hue of the reds slightly up to around 3 and after doing that the next thing I want to do I'm just going to zoom into the eyes and do some white turning of the eyes so just come here and get the adjustment brush tool and I'm going to Take the temperature slightly down to around negative 9 and use a tint of around 60 
60 and turn up the highlights around 4 and do the same for my whites and come to the saturation and slightly desaturate the brush so I'm just going to paint in the eyes to do the eye whitening just like that and you can see we are now whitening the eye so space bar and left click to move to a different area and just whiten those areas use the space bar and also come and whiten these other areas just like that so we're now doing teeth whitening just a little bit and after that we're just going to be good to go so make sure you don't or reduce on the size and just come and work on other areas just like that so we are now doing the eye and teeth whitening and when you feel like you are really overdone with the eye and teeth whitening you can either come to the saturation and take it up slightly and also come to this and also take it down to the blues and also take this down back to the greens and after doing that, we're just going to come back to Photoshop to do the last and final color grading for this very image. So that's the before camera and that's the after. We're just going to come in the hue and saturation slider and you're going to, first of all, come to the reds and hue down the reds just slightly to around 1 and take down the saturation of the reds. And after doing that, we're just going to do the same for our yellows and slightly desaturate or remove the saturation a little bit. So come back to the black and white adjustment layer and we're just going to create a black and white adjustment layer. Change the blend mode to multiply and just come and turn down the opacity. Just like that. So I just want to create a more defined melanin look. And come back to the black and white and this time around, Create another black and white layer, leave the, opa the blend mode to normal and turn down the opacity and slightly take it down to reduce on or take it up to reduce on the saturation of the image just like that. Then you're going to come to selective color and target only the blacks and in this case I just want to darken the dark areas of the image up to around 3 and add a little bit of blues. Remember the opposite of yellow is blue so just take down the slider of the yellows just like that and it's going to be adding blue to the photo so don't take it all the way down so i think at around negative eight we are good to go and this is it so let's say before and after for the retouching this is the image before and after before after hope you can see and love the results and also a final thing is going to be saving the image so it doesn't change in color after being saved so just come to file export and come to export as and when you come to export as just come down to this and it's going to open up this window format is jpeg image size i leave this the way it is resample i make sure i sharpen the image slightly and i select the resample to by cubic sharper i leave the canvas size the way it is and in order not to have color changes in your image after doing skin retouching Always make sure to select to convert to sRGB and also embed the color profile. And after selecting these options, the image is going to be loaded in the preview. And you can now come and simply hit export and choose a location where you want to save your photo after doing screen retouching. So basically, this is all for today's story. And if I told you I found this helpful, don't forget to like this video. And don't forget to subscribe. If I told you I've been watching and you're not subscribed to this channel, Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.